The information contained in this presentation is intended for general informational purposes only. The presentation is not a substitute for a review of the applicable government regulations, codes, OSHA standards, or other regulations, and should not be construed as legal advice or opinion. Specific questions should be referred to the proper regulatory authorities, electrical engineer, licensed electrician, or attorney. Cable types include NM for non-metallic, SE service entrance, AC armored cable, UF underground feeder. Non-metallic cable, often called by the trade name Romex, provides labeling which identifies its characteristics. For instance, the identification NMB 14.2 G600V would mean NM is for non-metallic, B is the temperature rating 194 degrees Fahrenheit, 14 is for the gauge, 3 is for 3 conductors, 2 plus the ground, and 600 is for the maximum voltage. Temperature ratings are either NM up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit or NMB up to 194 degrees Fahrenheit. While you should be aware of the differences, NMB is the only option currently available from Southwire, the makers of Romex. Romex NMB color code by American Wire Gauge, AWG, sizes so you can easily identify the size of the cable. Romex 14.2 and 14.3 are both white, 12.2 and 12.3 are both yellow, 10.2 and 10.3 are both orange, and 6.2 and 6.3 are black. A couple of important notes about wire. AFCI, arc fault circuit interrupter breakers, should be wired with 14.2 and not 14.3, as you cannot share a neutral on the load side or it will not protect downstream. GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupter circuits, cannot share neutral. If used as a feeder, you will need a two-pole circuit breaker. Type SE service entrance cable is primarily used to convey power from the service drop to the meter base and from the meter base to the distribution panel. SER may be used in wet or dry locations at temperatures not to exceed 194 degrees Fahrenheit. UF or underground feeder is rated for in-ground and damp area installation including direct burial. From the outside, UF cable looks like NM cable, but the wires are also embedded as a group in solid thermoplastic rather than just individually encased in flexible thermoplastic. It comes labeled with the same information carried on NM cable plus the designation UF. AWG stands for American Wire Gauge. The smaller the number, the larger the wire. Therefore, a number 12 wire is larger than a number 14 wire. Stranded versus solid. Stranded wire is much more flexible than solid wire of equal size. For this reason, stranded wire is used when the wire needs to move around frequently, as in an extension cord, for example. Larger in size for the same gauge, it is used for larger size, which means smaller gauge wiring, as it is easier to run than its more stiff solid counterpart. Here are some common uses for specific wire gauges. You should always review the equipment's requirements or consult the current building code to ensure you are in compliance. Plenty of information is readily available, so always be sure to take advantage of it. Here's how to determine the maximum wattage allowed for wire. Amperage times voltage equals wattage. So if you multiply the voltage for 15 amps and 20 amps, you get different results from the chart. 15 times 120 equals 1800 watts. 20 times 120 equals 2400 watts. The reason for this is because there is an 80% safety factor built in. 1800 watts times 80% is 1440 watts, which is the maximum wattage allowed for 14 gauge wire. 2400 times 0.80% is 1920 watts, the maximum wattage allowed for 12 gauge. These figures, the ones with the 80% safety factor built in, are what is shown on the chart. Most wire will be marked CU for copper, which is the most common conductor of residential electricity. AL, aluminum, is still being used today on larger circuits that don't require as many terminations to various devices. It is also still used for feeders to panels and large appliances such as electric heat pumps, ranges, or dryers. These circuits are commonly terminated in disconnects and electrical panels with lugs that are rated and suitable for aluminum wiring. Older small branch circuit wire could be aluminum or copper clad aluminum. CCA or copper clad aluminum construction 
was adopted to avoid some of the problems with aluminum wire, yet retain some of the cost advantage. In the late 1960s, a device specification known as CUAL was created that specified standards for devices intended for use with aluminum wire. Larger undercut screw terminals were designed to hold the wire more suitably. Unfortunately, CUAL switches and receptacles failed to work well enough with aluminum wire. So a new specification called COALR, meaning Copper Aluminum Revised, was created. These devices employ screw terminals that have even deeper undercuts and are designed to act as a similar metal to aluminum and to expand at a similar rate. COALR applies only to standard light switches and receptacles. CUAL is the standard marking for circuit breakers and larger equipment. THHN stands for Thermoplastic High Heat Resistant Nylon Coated. THWN stands for Thermoplastic High Heat and Water Resistant Nylon Coated. T is for the thermoplastic insulation on the wire. H is for heat resistance. The second H is for high heat resistance up to 194 degrees Fahrenheit. W means the wire is rated for wet locations such as outdoors. N is for nylon coated which is impervious to damage from oil or gas. Sometimes a little education can make one more careless than before as someone feels more comfortable in their knowledge. There is a cardinal firearm safety rule that says, treat every firearm as if it is loaded. That can be applied to working with electricity. Treat all electrical as if it is energized. By making this assumption, you will reduce your chances of an unwelcome surprise. If you make a mistake in plumbing, you might make someone unhappy. Make a mistake in air conditioning and someone might be uncomfortable. But a mistake with electricity and you could injure or kill yourself or others. I realize that probably most of you watching this have already been shocked by electricity and obviously have lived to tell about it. Unfortunately, the more that occurs, the more it tends to lower our defenses. Please never take safety for granted and always treat electricity with the respect it deserves. Your life and the life of others may depend on it.